Hi everyone, it's Liam here from biggerplate.com. In this short video, I want to show you how mind mapping can support effective brainstorming. We're going to use the all new MindMeister to see how a single mind map can help you to generate, explore and develop ideas more effectively during brainstorming processes, whether you're working by yourself or in a group setting. Before we look at the practicalities of using MindMeister to support brainstorming, let's first take a quick look at some general tips and advice to keep in mind for any brainstorming process. First off, any good brainstorming process should move through three stages, which are diverge, explore, and converge. So let's take a quick look at each of these in turn. In the diverge phase, our goal is to generate ideas going as big and broad as we can in our thinking, and ideally focusing more on quantity rather than quality at this stage. This is the process that most people associate with brainstorming, getting lots of ideas out, probably using post-it notes or flip chart pads and scribbling up loads of ideas, no matter how unusual they may seem. Next, our brainstorm should move into the explore phase. And this is where we start to take those initial ideas and work with them a little bit harder, bouncing them against one another, asking questions to understand more, and just trying to build up our thinking around some of those initial ideas. In doing so, we probably also start to filter out some of the weaker or less relevant ideas that were generated during the diverge phase, because we're now starting to explore which of the ideas are most relevant and naturally exploring those ideas more than others. Finally then, we want to converge, meaning we take the key ideas from the exploration phase and try to focus in on just the really important ones that matter, perhaps identifying some clear priorities or actions or next steps based on whichever ideas have really emerged as being the most important. Now, if you've ever been in a brainstorming session or even just a meeting at work that has felt somewhat pointless or unsatisfactory, it's almost certainly because the process was missing one or more of these three stages or did not allow sufficient time and structure for each phase to be completed properly. So keep these three phases in mind whenever you're planning any brainstorming session or any team meeting in general. A second tip to keep in mind if you're brainstorming in a group setting is to design your process so that you get people working individually, then in pairs, and then as a whole group. And this is particularly important if you are the facilitator and leading the meeting. While it might be tempting to simply open up for a group discussion and hear what people think, it can actually work against you and the group because often the first things that come to someone's brain and the first things said out loud will come to shape everything that follows afterwards, good and bad. Instead of opening up for group discussion immediately, it's actually much more effective to set everybody a question or a topic to think about, and then ask them to work silently on their own ideas first without comparing with other people. Once you've given people enough time to work individually on their ideas, you can ask them to discuss with the person next to them in pairs to see what each other came up with and where overlaps or differences might be. Once you've given the pairs time to have a discussion, then and only then should you open it up for that whole group discussion. The reason for doing this and the benefits of doing this is it means the ideas that will be discussed amongst the whole group have already been through a bit of filtering and improvement before they're put in front of everyone, which means the group can focus and explore the most relevant ideas and information rather than the first thing that comes to someone's mind. Finally, it's a good idea to create constraints for your brainstorming, whether those are constraints of time, uh, the number of words you add to a mind map, the number of contributions you want from each person or group, or even just by focusing the group on a particular and specific question. While people might think constraints hamper creative thinking, it in fact has been shown to help it along, whilst also ensuring your session is manageable on a practical level, by keeping people within a clearly defined set of parameters and ensuring an equal ability for people to contribute, and a reduced likelihood of going too far off into tangents and dead ends that are not relevant. So, there are a few tips for running brainstorming sessions in general, but now let's look at how mind mapping software like MindMeister can be practically used in order to support and enable better quality brainstorming. The core power of mind mapping in a brainstorming session is to help you create a well-structured view of the unstructured ideas that you are hoping may emerge. If ever you've been in a brainstorming session with lots of post-it notes or flip charts, you'll know that one of the problems is what comes next. How do you turn that mess of ideas and information into something you can actually work with and develop? 
Often the solution in those situations is somebody taking photos and later trying to transcribe or interpret all of the crazy scribbles into something coherent, and as a process that's therefore full of risk and potential for mistakes and misunderstandings. Instead, a much better approach is to integrate mind mapping software like MindMeister into your brainstorming session as the means to guide your brainstorm, capture the best ideas that emerge, and more importantly, help you develop them further with the group in real time, all within a single mind map which is easy for participants to see and engage with in the moment. This means you can clarify and confirm exactly what people mean in the moment. So there's also no doubt or ambiguity after that meeting, that brainstorming session. And the mind map acts as a fantastic visual summary of the brainstorm and discussions that happened. In terms of how to do this, a great way to start is with simple mind maps containing basic prompts to spark thinking for you or your group. A very simple approach might be using a mind map with the five W's and one H questions as a jumping off point around your idea or topic. So let's say we had an idea for a new type of car and we wanted to work as a group brainstorming ideas for how to turn this idea into reality. Remember that in that group setting, we'd ask participants to think about things individually, then discuss in pairs, before then capturing the ideas in the mind map for further development and discussion. When we're ready for the group's ideas, it's easy in MindMeister to capture those ideas in the mind map and importantly build on them further. So let's say that one participant suggests that under who we should be mapping out information about our target market for the new product. We can add target market into the mind map and then ask that person or people to elaborate on what they were thinking and talking about in terms of target market. What's more, once we've captured their inputs, we can now open it up to the rest of the group to see if they have any different or other ideas to add into this section around target market. And of course, continue capturing these in the mind map, using just a few keywords at a time to represent the inputs. And of course, checking with our participants continuously that what they see on the screen in the brainstorming mind map is a good reflection of what they were trying to say. If not, we edit and adapt in real time until they're happy that what's on the screen represents what they were trying to articulate. This acts as a great way to remove ambiguity and vagueness from the mind map and helps to focus in ever tighter on the right information. This means everybody can then trust the document as a record of the brainstorming discussion and the thinking that went into it. As you can see, the key benefit of the mind map is it can both capture and help you develop those ideas. You can use the map to prompt people just by asking, can you tell me more about this or how can we break this down further? The mind map structure helps you to both break things down into their component parts for better understanding, but also build up ideas by expanding outwards until you feel you have clarity. So that's an example of using a mind map with some pretty generic headings, but you could use mind maps with very different prompts like this one, which contains a number of what if questions that you could then brainstorm with a group or by yourself. So again, we could use our new car example again and use this mind map to brainstorm around uh, this topic slightly differently. So what if we made it smaller? What would the impact be? Perhaps it might be cheaper, but does it still fit with that target market who question that we were brainstorming earlier, perhaps? What if we change it? Well, maybe in our brainstorming session, we say, well, perhaps we stop thinking about making cars altogether and start making uh, bicycles instead. Now, from this idea, we can explore outwards as far as we want to go, using MindMeister to capture our ideas and help us break things down until there's sort of nowhere else to go. So simple prompts can take you a long way and the mind map structure helps to both support and record your thinking journey. Asking yourself or your groups to think about the pros and cons of any idea is another simple way to prompt your thinking. Remember that we also want to try and keep our brainstorm aligned with that diverge, explore and converge concept that we discussed earlier. And so as your mind maps evolve through exploration, you may also want to keep reminding yourself or the group of the need to converge around a key set of priority ideas or next steps or actions. When we want to start converging, we can leverage functionality in MindMeister like the icons or even the topic formatting to ensure that we make certain information visually stand out in the mind map so that we can more easily identify those ideas within what might become a very big mind map. We want to make sure those key ideas, the things we've converged on as being most important, stand out visually. And MindMeister gives us great options to make that stuff stand out.
Now, while I certainly prefer and recommend using a template with some simple prompts to start a brainstorming process, it is, of course, perfectly possible to simply start with a blank mind map and explore whatever comes to your mind in whatever order you wish. Once again, MindMeister will help you to build out ideas or break ideas down into component parts until they make more sense. Now, my own feeling when I start brainstorming with a blank mind map like this is that it's a great way to get some ideas and thoughts out of my mind that I already have and that I just want to get sort of written down somewhere and develop a little bit. However, I do also find that with this type of approach, I might not be prompted to think of things beyond what might be more immediately obvious. And that's where I might then switch into using a template map with some existing prompts and headings that perhaps trigger my brain in a way that I might not have been able to do myself. The key thing to remember is there's not really a right or wrong way to approach a brainstorming session, but however you approach it, one thing I can say with confidence is mind mapping tools like MindMeister will help to support that process and your thinking much more effectively, helping you turn those messy, chaotic, uh, early ideas into something much more structured and understandable. By doing that, you give yourself and your team a much better chance of identifying the best ideas and then turning those into reality. So there you have it, a quick look at better brainstorming with some help from mind mapping. To try out MindMeister for yourself, head on over to mindmeister.com. For more resources to help you go further with mind mapping, visit biggerplate.com.